Hey guys, are you ready for chapters nine and 10? Now, last time Sam and Ranger had gone to um, the rock where they wrote everything and then they realized that they needed to get back because Amelia wasn't able to climb the top of it. And chapter nine is called A Secret Cave. So I'm a little bit, uh, I'm a little bit excited to see what this secret cave is all about. The sun was getting ready to set after supper, but there was still plenty of light. So when Sam asked to go back to the rock, Ma nodded. Be careful. I'll take dog with me. Sam slapped his knees and Ranger came running. We'll pretend we're the first ones on the trail, Sam told them as they raced towards the rock. The sun setting made it glow pinkish orange. We can look for gold. Ranger galloped alongside Sam. It felt good to run with the warm wind in his fur. When they approached the rock, Sam headed for the spot where he'd started climbing before. But something, a vibration in the air, a sharp smell mixed with the earth and rock made the fur on Ranger's neck prickle. Ranger barked and jumped in front of Sam to hold him back. Hey! Sam stopped just as the Buzzing rattle echoed off the rocks. Sam sucked in his breath. Curled on the rock ledge right where Sam had been about to step was a snake, a rattler that had to be almost four feet long. Its forked tongue darted out, tasting the air. Its tail vibrated faster, sizzling with a very high-pitched warning, stay away. Be still, dog, Sam whispered. Don't spook it. His voice was tight and scared. Ranger growled low in his throat. The snake raised its twitching tail and another angry buzz filled the air. The snake tasted the air again, then turned and slowly slithered away through the dust and grass into a crevice. Whew! Sam let out a rush of breath. You are the best dog in the world. He sank to his knees and wrapped his arms around Ranger's neck. Ranger could feel him shaking. Sam held on for a long time, but when the trembling went away, he gave Ranger one more squeeze and stood up. Now, let's climb to the top. Sam stepped carefully from ledge to ledge, watching for snakes, but he didn't see any more. He climbed higher and higher with Ranger on his heels. Finally, Sam stepped into a ledge with some shade and plopped down to rest. Let's take a break, dog, then we can go the rest of the way to the top. Ranger didn't want to take a break. He thumped his paws on Sam's chest, knocking him over and looking him all over his face. That usually got Luke moving again when he was tired. But Sam only laughed. I just need to catch my breath, I promise. Ranger licked Sam's ear one more time and wandered off to, to sniff at a wide crack between two of the rocks. It smelled damp and cool. He pushed his nose in a little more. It was a deep crevice. Ranger barked. His Bark echoed somewhere that sounded far away. What'd you find, dog? Sam leaned over, over him to look into the crevice. This looks like it goes on for a bit. He turned himself sideways and wiggled through until he disappeared. Ranger barked. It's all right. Come in, dog. Ranger squeezed through the narrow passage until it opened into a cool room with rock walls. He barked again, and his wolf bounced all around. We discovered a cave. Sam looked around. When his eyes got used to the shadows, he saw writing on the walls. More names. No, I guess we didn't discover it. Looks like someone else was here first. Ranger liked the cave. The air was cool and soft in here, and he was getting tired. He turned a few times and settled down onto the rocky floor, head on his paws. Sam ran his hand over the names, reading them out loud. Jay Bauer, was here on July 11th, 1847. F.B. Chamberlain was here in 1849. Look at all the names, Brisby, Hawk, Connor. So many people here before us, dog. Do you think they saw rattlesnakes or got sick and had to scare off buffalo stampedes? Ranger lifted his head. Luke used to talk with him like this sometimes when they were alone in the backyard or up in Luke's bedroom. He'd talk about important things and ask questions as if Ranger was another person. Ranger could never answer, but somehow Luke always understood that he was listening. Sam kind of seemed to understand that too. I wonder if they all made it to the Oregon Territory or, or California or, or the Great Salt Lake or wherever they're going. Sam traced another name with his finger. I hope so. Then he added even more quietly, I 
we all make it too. Ranger stood up. He walked over to Sam and nestled his hand. I'm so glad you came with us, dog. Sam gave him a good long scratch behind the ears. We should go. It'll be dark soon and Ma will have a fit if we're not back. I'll race you down. So it kind of seems like uh, he's kind of having a difficult time. I know that Sarah's parents just passed away. So this is, this is a big, can you imagine going through this like Sam? Crazy. At the campfire that night, Sam told everyone the story of the secret cave full of names and the rattlesnake and how Ranger scared it away. You're a mighty fine dog, Ma told Ranger. She slipped in him an extra thick slice of bacon. Good job, boy. There it was again. Good job, boy. But Luke didn't come. Still, Ma's praise made Ranger warm inside. The greasy, salty bacon filled him up, and soon he rested his chin on his paws and closed his eyes. But all night long, Ranger dreamed of sharing a cheeseburger with Luke and Sadie. He imagined curling up at the foot of Luke's soft bed with the bright red comforter. He dreamed of baseball and hot dogs and chasing squirrels around the picnic table. When he woke, Pa and Mr. Harrigan were hitching up the oxen. It was time to start walking again. Ranger trotted along beside Sam and Sarah. Even though they gave him extra hugs and ear scratches, he felt tired and sad. This journey seemed like it might never end. Ranger had found Amelia when she was lost. He warned Sam about the buffalo. He'd scared off the snake. What else was he supposed to do? There was no one lost to find. Was he going to keep walking with this wagon forever? Chapter 10, Farewells and Snowballs. The farewell kind of makes me wonder if this is where um, maybe we, we leave Sarah. And the snowballs, it seems like they may be getting um, getting into, into some snow, but I know it's not quite July yet, if you'll remember. So maybe it's where they are, like in the territory. If I'm looking kind of at this map here, if you, if you kind of look, if the further north you go, um, the colder it gets. So I don't know, maybe, maybe they're going through mountains. I don't know, we'll see. Six days after the Abbots left Independence Rock, their wagon train got smaller. Some folks left the main trail to take a cutoff across the desert. That route, that route saved three or four days, but it meant traveling 50 miles without water. The Beard Brothers went that way. They figured anything that got them to California sooner brought them one day closer to their riches. The Abbots set off on the longer, safer route that led to Fort, Fort Bridger. There, Sarah would meet up with her uncle so they could take her home to the Mormon community on the Great Salt Lake. They say when you see it from a distance with the sun shining, it looks like a lake of gold, Sarah said as they were walking behind their wagon. The hope was back in her voice. Ever since she found out her uncle's, her, ever since she found her name, ugh, Ever since she found her uncle's name on Independence Rock and wrote hers below it. Like maybe she could see a life for herself beside that sparkling lake, even though her parents were gone. When the Abbots arrived at the fort, Ma started asking around for Sarah's uncle right away. It wasn't long before a man hurried up to the wagon. His clothes and hair were the color of dry grass and his eyes were a bright green. He bent down and held out his arms. Is that our Sarah? Ma had wondered if Sarah would remember her uncle. She hadn't seen him in four years, but she did. Uncle Aaron! He wrapped Sarah in a hug that would have made any mama bear proud. When he finally let her go, both of their faces were streaked with tears. We're going to take such good care of you. Aunt Helen's got your bed all made up. Martha, Eliza, Abram, and Mercy can't wait to see you again. Sarah smiled a little. At the campfire that night, she already seemed to be slipping away from the Abbots and into the Clark family. She sat beside Uncle Aaron and listened to his stories about the big, salty lake. In the morning, Sarah hugged all the Abbots and thanked them for their kindness. Sam pulled the three quilt squares from his pocket and unfolded them. He chose the one with the apple tree and held it out to Sarah. It's part of a friendship quilt my cousin made. You can keep it to remember me. I'll always remember you, but thank you, Sarah said. She tucked the square into her pocket and squatted down to Pat Ranger. I'm gonna miss you, dog. Ranger nuzzled her hand. He'd miss Sarah too and hoped she would be all right. Seeing her small hand tucked into her uncle's big one made Ranger feel better. Safe, he thought. Sarah looked safe. 
When Sam and his family started off on the trail that went northwest, Ranger felt an unmistakable tug to follow. Sam still needed him. The Abbots still had a long, dangerous road ahead. The nights had been getting colder as they went west into the mountains. Okay, so there's our clue. They are, they are going further north, but I think the mountains are where the snow may come into play. One night, it began to snow lo not long after they made camp. The Abbots had to eat their stew huddled against the wagon while the wind blew snow into their faces. They all piled into the wagon to sleep that night. In the morning, Sam woke up first. He waited, he waited outside in the snow sparkling sunshine, hidden behind some brush and packing the snow into balls. When Lizzie climbed down with her morning frown and her hair all tangled, he launched his attack. The first snowball missed, the second hit her in the shoulder and exploded into slushy bits. Samuel George Abbott, Lizzie hollered. Sam thought she'd run to Maud and get him in trouble. Instead, she bent down gathered up a handful of snow and charged towards Sam's hiding spot. He didn't have time to run. Lizzie had good aim. She pelted him in the chest and they both laughed. Let's see if you can see it. So we know that Lizzie is not uh, having the best time on this trip. So this is probably very welcome from her brother to see her having a good time. Lizzie went Okay, Sam tossed the snowball into the air for Ranger, who jumped to catch it in his teeth. The snowball broke up and clumps got stuck in the fur on Ranger's chin. Sam laughed. You look like you have a beard, dog. Lizzie went back to the wagon to get Amelia, and they all snowballed one another while Ma and Pa laughed. By late morning, the sun had melted the snow into slush, and it was time to set out again. In the days that followed, Sam saw more of things he'd wondered about from his father's guidebook. Sam drank the cold, clear water that bubbled up from the ground at Soda Springs and marveled at the spot called Steamboat Springs a little further along the trail. It was just as Mr. Palmer had described it. A cone, a cone about two and a half feet tall and, and with a six inch hole on the top. Every 10 seconds or so, water would come hissing and belching out the top. Sometimes it shot up higher than Sam was tall. One evening when they made camp, the ground was covered in volcanic rocks, fragments as black as night and smooth as glass. Another night, the mosquitoes were so thick, they swirled like flakes in a snowstorm. When Ma was, started making bread, so many got into the bowl, there was no way to pick them all out. Oh my goodness. She finally gave up and kneaded them into the dough. The bread that night was more black than white. Ugh. As they continued west, Sam started to hear his parents arguing in the wagon at night. He didn't know why. Ranger heard it too. Ranger could sense fear in people's voices. He, he could smell it in the air. And with every passing mile, that scent grew stronger around Miss Abbott. Their next stop was called Three Island Crossing. Something about it scared Ma a lot. All right, that's all for today. Oh, my goodness, this is, this is getting good. We are at chapter 11, and it'll be released in a couple days. I miss you guys.